Hello everyone, my name is Enes Joost and I'm application engineer for industrial 3D printing at Shining 3D in EMEA region. Today I want to show you our case study which is about the design to print workflow of bottle opener. First I will show you how I designed the part and how I did the generative design study. Afterwards, I showed you how I used the software Voxel Tense Additive to repair the data, orient it, create supports, nest the parts and slice them in order to use our hatching program EPH. Afterwards, I will show you how to prepare the machine itself and I will introduce you into the print control software. In the end, we have a little part where we used our new auto scan inspec to scan the bottle opener and compare it to the original data created to see how exact our print actually is. So now I will show you how I designed the part. First, I created the two connections to the bottle. I did some research on how the shape should be to actually open a bottle and how the distance between both parts should be. Then, according to the design I had in my head, and also according to design for additive manufacturing techniques, I designed first handle. That time I also decided that I will print it vertically. So, in that orientation, because then I will be able to use no support structure. While saying, okay, this is the print direction I want to achieve, I also included in my thoughts that no surface can be less than 45 degrees respecting the horizontal area. The next part I created is a connection from the front to the back. Of course, I will also need it for both sides. Here we go. To make the part stronger, I included another connection between the opener and the part where it lays on the bottle. Since we want the part to have a Shining 3D logo, I added this surface where I will be able to write something on. I created these radius in order to make it easier to print. What is still missing is the end of the bottle opener. Since it will be a keychain opener, we need a connection to our keychain, which is basically just a hole. With Shining 3D machinery, with Shining 3D machinery and a special parameter set, we are able to print holes like that up to a diameter of 25 mm. Here, of course, the diameter is a lot smaller, but it's still good we can print it without any support structure. Last but not least, we created the Shining 3D logo onto the part. The next part will be the generative design validation. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so what I basically need to do is I need to set the material. In the material table, I can actually set all the material properties for my printed TI6AL4B. So, in order to perform this generative design study, we first need to create a design space, which is the whole part in this case. What we also do is we will preserve some regions where we don't want changes to happen. The offset 
means how deep inside the part should not be changed measured from this surface we set it to 0 0.5 millimeters and then I think the most important is the force the force I got from doing some research on bottle openers apparently it's 160 newtons on that surface yes we can also apply a pressure gravity or torque but this time we will only fix an area and the fixed area is this one the offset we will set to 0 0.5 millimeters and we want this surface to be fixed while this load is being applied what we can do next we set the manufacturing settings so for this optimization we can either have no general effect on the shape a hollowed out solid thin wall structures or strut like structures but I want to keep the general shape maybe optimize it a little bit in weight and I will keep it here I will keep the material spread at 0% um, of course I want to prevent enclosed void creations we don't have that here at the moment the overhang prevention axis is pretty important this time and since the vertical direction is the x axis in this design we will choose x we have no material extrusion since we don't use an FDM or FFF technology here we click OK when we click on generate we can set the study quality it will show us how long this will take if we want to reduce the mass but I think only little mass reduction is enough or we can set it to a targeted mask or to a factor of safety I think that makes the most sense here since we don't want our bottle opener to break and then we hit generate after the generation is done the model looks like this you can see the end has changed a little bit here we can see the different stress levels in the bottle opener red are the areas with the highest stress and blue the ones with the lowest stress the next part is the support creation and slicing of the part so first we put our bottle opener in the software voxel lens and we orient it in the way we want it to be printed as I said in the beginning I designed it in a way that no angle is under 45 degrees as you can see here then we move it to the position where we want to have it Z height 2 millimeters so we will have a 2 millimeter support underneath later we move it to a position inside the build platform since an STL part is made out of triangles the quality might not be perfect so there is also a fix function included in voxel dance there's either automatic fix or the fix module to repair the part here we can see all the triangles we can basically see that there is only one shell no holes so our part has good quality to print next part is the part of support creation we can either run the script directly or enter the support module here I choose the strategy for titanium and I click the surface where I want the support to be generated hit that I only want it at this surface and then generate the support what you can see on top of the support 
is the so-called teeth. They connect the support and the part. To make the actual settings and the scripts for the support is not that easy and also needs experience. What we will do next is we will duplicate the part onto the build platform. So let's see how many parts we can fit on it. I think 75 should fit. Let's see, maybe some more. What about 80 parts? That looks basically good to me. Let's make the view a bit clearer. To use the 2D nesting function, we need to mark all the parts. And here we uh, do the settings of how we want the parts to be nested inside the build platform, like the spacing settings and what solution we want to create. Hit the OK button. Of course, I fastened that up. Here we can see there's still some space on the right side. And here we can also see that the 0.5 millimeters to the corner are actually super close. So let's make another iteration of nesting. So what we get here is a much more wild uh, nest where parts are oriented in different angles but also the spacing to the side is a bit bigger and the spacing between the parts is also bigger. Afterwards we hit slicing and after the parts are being sliced the software will show us this. Here we can go through all the slices and we can see how the part is actually built up slice by slice. After slicing we export the file into so-called CLI files and those can be imported into our own developed software EPH which is there to generate the laser path. So we can create new strategies or just choose the strategies. I choose the strategy which is right for my machine in Stuttgart for titanium. As you can see here, a lot of functions can be done, which all affect the parts quality and performance, especially um, laser and speed are important here, but there are also other details. So we open the part and we can go through the part as we could in voxel dance. This basically looks the same see all the slices here. So we can either do a batch hatch where we can hatch several parts or we're hatching only this part. I merged those parts beforehand to make it easier to process for the software. And now the EP hatch is calculating the laser path. And now the blue parts show the actual um, laser path. And when we zoom in those areas, we can see how the laser is actually moving through the part. There's the black border and the blue inner of the part. Next, we can use this file we just generated to send to our machine. What we can see here is the manual page of the machine where we can make several settings. For example, now I'm moving the build cylinder down. Um, I can also home it. The red circle is always the home button. I can do the same for the supply cylinder. which contains the powder in our machines. So the supply cylinder is supplying the powder and the recoder, which is moving now, moves the powder to the left side, layer by layer, until we 
generate our final part in the build cylinder where every layer is lasered one after another. Here we can switch things on and off. The next page is the data page where we load all our parts in. This is done pretty quick as you can see here. The green parts show parts which are lasered with laser number two. The pink area shows the parts which are lasered with laser number one since we have a dual system. And as you can see as well, the overlap area in the middle sort of changes every layer in order to create a great part. What we can do again here is we can go through the layers and if we select the part we can see that we can also select the laser and again select a certain kind of strategy. We can replace the model, we can rotate it or move it, or other settings are also possible here. What happens now is that we click on the next button at the lower right and we will start to prepare the machine by clicking on the prepare button. We can also click the go button directly and then the machine will prepare first and then start printing immediately. After preparation, the print will start and we will see a window which contains the layers left and the height left and others. At the end of the print, uh, we will get a document. During the print process, the machine consistently measures all values which are shown in the lower bar and will adjust, for example, the oxygen level or the cabin bar pressure if needed. All those values are always traced as well. We have an MQTT port for IoT functions where all those values and others are measured and can be sent to a database to connect machines and the production system with each other. The documentation which is being created can basically just be opened in the folder where it's being saved. It can look like this. So at the beginning we see the files which are printed, the oxygen level in respect to the layer. We also see the pressure difference of the filter and the gas speed as well as the cabin pressure. There are two errors in measuring here. And what is very interesting to me is the supply ratio which means we supply more powder at slices where more powder is being sintered. After checking the documentation, we will unpack the parts and post-process them. So we will wait a little bit until the parts cool down and we will take them out of the machine. We will recycle the powder and sieve it. And next we will break off the parts uh, of the build platform. Our support enables us to do that and we can blast the parts. After that it will rain parts like you can see here. To verify our production quality we use our Autoscan inspec. What you can see here is the starting window of measuring the bottle opener in the Autoscan inspec. So the software will start and here you can see a video on how we did the scanning on the Autoscan inspect of our bottle opener and on the right side you can see the image which is created at the same time in the software. The Autoscan inspect consists of two 5 megapixel cameras and this rotating table in order to ensure very high accuracy of less than 10 micrometers. We basically need to edit the data, we cut off the table which was also scanned with the part. After that we do another scan where we basically we turned around the part and we scan it again and at the next point we will merge those two scans together. Which is happening now here. 
and then we will get our final STL data, which you can see here. The last step for today is comparing the scanned data with the created cat data, which we are doing in Control X. You can see the cat data, the measured data, now the best fit alignment, and in the end, a comparison where you can see that our production quality is definitely enough for the intended use of this product. Thank you for listening, everyone. We will now have a little Q&A round where I will be answering your questions. But always feel free to send us an email at am underscore support at shining3d.com. And I'm glad to invite you to my colleague's webinar, which will be next week on June 10th. It is called Local End-to-End -End Solutions by Shining3D for our EMEA customers.